One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Here, coming to you today with an intermediate up the neck version of the classic tune John Henry in the key of G. I did a beginner version of this lesson in the past and we played the, the solo down the neck, but I wanted to do another version and work on an up the neck solo. I heard Rob McCurry play this at a live Del McCurry show and I've been really obsessed with this song ever since. Do yourself a favor, go check out the Del McCurry band. They're one of the best bluegrass bands working today. I'm gonna break down the whole solo note for note and then also show you a bunch of backup stuff I would do for this song. So the song, the tempo is a little faster on this song. So we're gonna do some down the neck rolling backup. I'm gonna show you kind of a three finger version of how I might play the chords up the neck. I like to do three finger chords on faster songs. It helps you play a little faster. I'm gonna break all that down as well. And if you're watching the preview of this lesson, you can head over to my website, mikeheadingmusic.com and grab the full lesson. You'll get access to watch all the videos and you can download the tabs and the practice tracks. All right, here's the up the neck version of John Henry in the key of G. All right, let's start breaking down this intermediate lesson for John Henry. We're just in the key of G, standard G tuning. So let me play the first five measures of the solo and then we'll start breaking it down. Here we go. Do that a few times. One more time real slow. So for this intermediate solo, we're going to look at taking that basic melody and, and playing those notes up the neck. It's not going to be note for note how you'd play it down here, but again, we're going to try and get, capture some of that flavor of the down the neck solo, moving it up the neck. So we're going to start with our first finger on the 12th fret of the first string. Um, beat three of measure one. So the first two beats are rest. So one, two, and then we're going to play three. And then I'm going to use my second finger on the 14th fret. And then we're going to reach our pinky all the way up to the, the 17th fret. So it's just these notes down here. You might be familiar with this position if you've played some of those like Scruggs licks, like of idea that's basically the position we're working out of and you could really experiment with what fingers you use if you want to use your your first three fingers for me I like using my first second and pinky that's what works best for me and I'm kind of practicing trying to keep these notes down the other thing I'll do with my right hand for this solo is probably move a little bit closer to the the neck so rather than play way back here it's a little harsh back there, I think. So I'm gonna move my, my right hand a little closer to my left hand. And that's kind of optional, but that's what I'd recommend for playing this solo. So again, we're gonna start three, four, three, four, and then we're gonna play the 17th fret twice. And I'm using my middle finger, my right hand, four times in a row there. And then you're gonna go into this little kind of Sally Ann Scruggs position if you play that song. I got my second finger on the 15th fret of the second string, first finger to the 14th fret. So basically you go up, and then when you get this note down, keep that planted and that helps you move the rest of your hand. So you have, and then I'm gonna do a forward roll, T-I-M-T. -T. So you have, doing there is we're finding this note now on the, the second string so we can do a roll. So we basically took this note, moved it over here, and now we have a roll that we can do. So we have that's all we're doing there. And then measure three, go back to the 17th fret uh, with your pinky. And then you're going to hit the fifth string, and that's basically going to be just like a timekeeper. You'll see the note is in parentheses. It's, sometimes they call it a ghost note. So you don't really want to play that note really hard. You just want to use it as a timekeeper. Our melody is all up on the first string. 
So we're just using that fifth string as a timekeeper, basically. So you, you play the 17th fret in measure three, and then you hit that fifth string. And if you if you hit it with a little bit of volume, it's not the end of the world. But again, just remember, you don't have to play that note really loud. And then we're gonna go back to the 12th fret with your first finger, and then another ghost note. So we have. See how it, if you don't play that fifth string too loud, it helps that melody pop out. So you have. And then right here, quick, you're gonna have to kind of scrunch your hand together and then do pinky 14th fret on the first string. And then quick switch to your second finger on the 12th fret of the first string and then a forward roll with a bend on the 10th fret of the second string. And then down to this eighth fret. So let's break that down. So we have, and then right here, I like switching to my second finger, so that frees my first finger up to do that bend. So you have, let's just work on those, let's work on measure four on its own. And that's why I switched with my second finger there, because if you do it with your first finger, then you're kind of, you can't do that bend. So that's why you have to do that flip. So you have. And you're bending that note up while you're rolling through it. The other thing I might do is on that bend is move my right hand back a little bit. So I have. So you're really kind of experimenting with the tone that you're getting with your right hand there. Don't be afraid to give that bend a little attitude. One more time a little faster. And then right here, you that's into measure five. So you have Now you slide up, slide from eight to 12 with your first finger, and then put your second finger on the 12th fret, and then and then third finger 14. That's basically just gonna get you back up, except we're, it, it's easier to slide this way. So that's why I use those fingers there. Um, you could also maybe go and then bar your first finger, but for me that's not as easy. It's easier to go like this. So we're basically just taking those same notes. It's just we're just modifying the fingers to get to get back up there for the next time through the melody. So we have And then you're going to get back up to the 17th fret again. So I, I think the trickiest part about this solo is not rushing through it and then using the correct fingers because if you if you get out of position it's, it's gonna be hard to make it smooth. So I'd really recommend using the, the recommended left hand fingerings I have below the tab. So one more time. And then you're back up, reach your, your pinky back up to 17. This is measure six, play that note twice again. And then roll through that position. So that's the same as measure two. We're just getting up there a slightly different. So you have we're just getting up there with different fingers. And then and then measure seven, back up to the 17th fret with your pinky. And then take your pinky off, put your third finger on 15 and roll through those notes, T-I-M. And then take your third finger off, 14. So you're basically working this position. You have 14 with your first finger, 15 with your second finger, 15 with your third finger, and then your pinky. It's basically right like down here if you've played licks like this. And then reaching your pinky. That's what we're doing. We're just Again, the melody is all on the first string, so. And then. So the melody is pretty much all on the first string for this solo. So again, we walk up. And then right here. And then right here, you have to do a little flip. You're gonna quick move your pinky down 
to the 12th fret and you're gonna go into this D chord. And I'm just gonna do two fingers. So use this. You got quarter notes there. To quick slide your hand down and you play that note with your middle finger and then come down with your thumb and do the foggy mountain roll. So you have middle finger and then your thumb comes down, thumb middle. So let's practice that part. So we have And then right here, you're going to do a 10-11 hammer on the Foggy Mountain Roll again. And then thumb comes down, another hammer on. And then take your second finger off and roll forward again. That's just kind of like this lick down here. Just, it's similar to that kind of style of lick. So again, we walk up. Let's try just the right hand once. So we have from 17, or six, let's do the right hand of six through nine. I'm just gonna pretend they're all zeros for a second. Add the right hand, or the left hand back. A little faster. Practice that, that's a good spot to practice your transition. 